On a cold winter evening in a suburban neighborhood, inside a single car garage, a man works on his Chevy truck. A southern rock song, Sweet Home Alabama, plays in the background. Two curious little girls peek in from the kitchen door. The man, known to these rabble-rousers, is Dad, reaches for a large box of nails, two hammers, a sturdy piece of wood, and signals for the girls to join him. But this isn't just about hammering nails. This is about courage, the grit to keep on swinging, even when the target seems impossible to hit. A true master class in Gen X parenting, where scraped knees were a badge of courage and learning was loud and messy and thrilling. Those two little girls stood a little bit taller after that day. Does anybody have a memory like this? We need them. These types of memories are really important. They can be forged in the fires of childhood, whispering, you are brave, you are strong, you are smart. Keep on trying. Now, as far back as this rabble rouser can remember, I've always been a bit of an envelope pusher, an early adopter, and definitely a curious learner. I've managed to translate that into a career as a business leader, a business owner, and a fierce advocate for making healthcare easier through innovation. I've trained doctors and nurses and business development professionals on cutting edge technology like artificial intelligence and virtual reality, where knowledge is big business and staying ahead of the curve is critical to success. But a few years ago, something changed. Has anybody ever had a time in their life or their career where they just felt like their brain was fried? I'm not just talking about losing a set of keys here, but where important details were disappearing like smoke, and your problem-solving skills, well, they became non-existent. Well, this was happening to me. I couldn't keep up, but I couldn't slow down, even with every piece of technology at my fingertips. Working longer, hours, and harder, it just didn't seem like it was enough. Or maybe it was just too much. Does anybody else feel this way? Could this be COVID brain fog? Or am I actually losing my mind? Armed with a box of Oreo cookies at 2 a.m., I started my research. And according to neuroscientist and author Lisa Genova, forgetting things is actually, well, normal. We are not meant to be memory martyrs. Our brains actually aren't video recorders capturing every single detail. Shocking, right? Lisa says that the key to remembering is in actively paying attention. Okay, I'll say that again for the people in the back. Actively paying attention. Okay, so we remember what we pay attention to. Ding, ding, ding. Even at 2 a.m. with an almost empty box of Oreo cookies, this was starting to make some sense. Back-to-back -back Zoom calls and Teams meetings and 100 emails you have to respond to and phone calls and texts. Just because you are present at the meeting doesn't mean you are present in the meeting. And let's not even talk about TikToks and Instagram and Facebook and doom scrolling. As my mother would say, we are all running around like chickens with our heads cut off. She was raised on a farm. But how do we flip the script? How do we, how do we help ourselves and gain back control? Well, another brain guru and neuroscientist, Charn Ragnoth, says, 
if you want to remember something, you need to make it memorable and intentional because our memories are tied to our emotions and our senses. So let's break the cycle. But like breaking any bad habit, we've got some work to do. Charn also says that what's good for the body is good for the brain. Sleep, diet, exercise. I know, I know, easier said than done. So late night scrollers and snackers, prioritize your sleep to prioritize your memory. And all that multitasking we're doing, it's frying our focus. Taking big projects and breaking them down into bite-sized pieces can really go a long way into helping you achieve your goals and also not being so overwhelmed. 30 minutes of prioritized focus is really important. And next, this is an important one. We need to start spacing things out because not taking breaks in between meetings is really hurting us. I challenge you, for the next two weeks, put periodic breaks on your calendar. Go ahead, test your discipline. Okay, so we're getting good sleep, we're taking care of ourselves, we're stopping that high-level multitasking, and we're giving our brains a pit stop. Your brain is a powerful learning machine. Feed it quality versus quantity. The key is to be intentional. Curate the information you consume. I want to challenge you. Three things you want to learn this year. Write them down. Go ahead. Because writing also helps boost our memories. And journaling is a great way to stay connected and intentional. And technology can still be your friend. Just flip the script. Instead of doom scrolling, turn it into skilling. Because social media can still be an amazing learning hub for things like gardening clubs or DIY projects. If you have 30 minutes to watch cat videos, you have 30 minutes to pick up a new course. Try a podcast on your next commute or while you're working out. And if you have even more time than that, why not take a master class? Don't have time to read a book? No problem, because there's applications like Headway and Blinkist that offer summaries of hundreds of books. Short bursts of learning are really powerful. And if you're out there looking for a new job, head on over to LinkedIn and to YouTube because they have great micro-learning courses to up your interview game. Studying for something important? Break out that old school playlist from high school or college because music also helps us process information. Your brain can be a memory masterpiece for years to come instead of a digital dustbin. Remember, a curious mind is a youthful mind. And as Francis Bacon so wisely said, knowledge is power. So make a plan, grab some new knowledge, and get that brain focused and firing on all cylinders to stay ahead of the learning curve. Thank you.